happy mathematicians and happy hump day. I hope you're doing well. Today we are going to continue to talk about measurement and the other day we talked about length, right? We talked about how tall or short something is and we even were categorizing things by shortest to longest or tallest and our activity that we did together was long, longer, and longest. Well, today we're going to continue to use those vocabulary words, but we're really going to start focusing on how to do those measurements. So if I were to ask you what we might measure something in, you might come up with things like inches. You might have heard something like that before, or centimeters. You may have even heard of um, a foot or feet, right? Like not these feet, but um, like the length of one ruler, a standard size ruler. You might have heard of a yard or a meter. And all of those things are good things that we measure with, and people in the community that have jobs may use those things all the time, like a construction worker or someone that cuts fabric at a fabric store. But in first grade, we're really going to be talking about non-standard measurements. So I'm going to say that, and I want you to repeat it, so listen carefully. Non-standard measurements. And you're probably thinking, Mrs. Christenberry, what are you talking about? Non-standard just means that it's not what we usually use. So when we're talking about measurement today and on Friday, we're going to be using all sorts of things, things that you can find in your house, things that you might be able to find at school. So we might be measuring with toothpicks. We might be measuring with paper clips. If you can think back to school, those snap cubes that we had that we would make into rods or groups of 10, we might be using snap cubes to measure. Um, but today, I'm going to show you how to measure with something like that. And there are some very specific rules that, as mathematicians, we have to follow if we are going to measure something using a non-standard form of measurement. But before we do that, let's look at some posters that might give us some insight before we practice together. So before we talk about those rules that we have, let's go ahead and look and review what length is. Remember, length is measuring how long an object is. So let's go ahead and look at some of those rules. Here's a poster that tells us how to measure. So you can see here that they are measuring a flower pot and the flower, and also a popsicle stick. These are considered non-standard units of measurement because here they're using snap cubes, and what do you notice they're using here? That's right, paper clips. So let's go ahead and look at our rules. It says, start from the bottom. Stack the same unit of measurement on top of each other. Complete the stack at the top of the object being measured. So what I want to point out to you is that they started at the very bottom. These things were at the same level like we talked about on Monday. They also used the same unit of measurement. They used cubes or blocks the entire time. They didn't decide, oh, okay, I want to do a block here, and then I'm going to use uh, some chapstick here, and then, oh, you know what, I really like an ice cream cone, so I'm going to put one there. No, they used the same unit of measurement. That way they could say the flour and pot are eight cubes tall. So they were measuring the height. Now let's look at the length of this popsicle stick. Again, it says start at the end of the object right here. Match your unit to your object. So they put their paper clips right next to the popsicle stick. And then it says line your units up end to end. So you notice there are not any spaces between those paper clips. It wouldn't make sense to leave giant gaps in within those paper clips. And then it says stop at the end of the object being measured and count the units. So here we see how many paper clips long that paper clip, or I'm sorry, that popsicle stick is. One, two, three, and four. But there are rules to measure. There are also rules on how you are not supposed to measure. Okay, as a mathematician, it's really important to not only understand what we have to do, but also have to understand what we shouldn't do when we're measuring. So it shows the same objects that we want to measure. A pot and a flower and then that popsicle stick. But you can already tell a big difference with how they stacked the cubes and how they lined up the paper clips. So over here it says make sure your units you are using to measure are all facing the same direction. 
are these blocks or are these cubes facing the same direction? No, they're not. It says beginning at the bottom and then continue until you reach the end of the object being measured. So sometimes first graders would want to start at the top. But it's saying to us, in order to measure, we need to start at the bottom. They did do that correctly. Let's jump over here and see what they might have done wrong. Make sure that your units are touching end to end. First of all, some of these paper clips are not even touching. These two are. These two are as well, but they're not facing the same direction like they told us to do over here. Like I just said, it says your units must all face the same way so your measurement is accurate. Because here it says, we, we could say it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six paper clips long. But they didn't measure correctly, so we don't know if that's okay. the truth. Let's use some pictures of some sweet treats to practice how to measure something using non-standard measurement. So I went ahead and I chose my Easter M&Ms to measure. And remember that we start from the bottom and work all the way to the top. And we also have to make sure that our measurements are touching one another. So I'm going to start at the bottom. And I'm making sure my M&Ms are touching. It can be kind of hard because they start to roll away, right? And they have to touch from end to end and face the right direction. Maybe Mrs. Christenberry should have been smarter about this. My M&Ms are touching. This is taking way longer than I thought. But I'm getting all the way here. And I'm going to stop because my measurement reached all the way to the top. So now I'm going to count how many M&Ms it took. Why don't you count with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. As a mathematician, I want to make sure that I record my data. So because this is number one, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to record 10. But I want you to notice that I can't just leave it at 10. When we're talking about measurement, it has to have a label. If I look at that 10, I may say, what? 10 ice cream cones? 10 grandmas? 10 Mrs. Christenberries? No, we're not measuring using Mrs. Christenberries. We're measuring using M&Ms. So I will write M M's, 10 M and M's. Let's try another one together. So here I have my candy bar. Remember, I measure from the start to the finish and all of my units of measurement have to touch. So I'll go ahead and get started. M and M's can be a little bit tricky because they might roll around a little bit on you. And you can use any object you have in your house to measure as long as you use the same object each time. So I couldn't use one M&M and a pair of scissors or a pencil. That doesn't work. Okay, so it's just about to the end. So let's count again our M&Ms together. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I would say that the candy bar is six, right? No, wait a second, I forgot my label again. Hmm. I really like unicorns, so I'm gonna go ahead and write six unicorns. Oh, no, 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 wait. I really like pirates too, so I'll write six pirates. No, that doesn't make any sense. I have to use the unit that I worked with, so I'm going to again say six M&Ms. I'm gonna give you the chance in just a moment to try one on your own. Let's try measuring a piece of candy. Before you measure it on your own, I want you to kind of make an estimate. How many M&Ms do you think it would take for that piece of candy? Okay, whether your prediction was correct or incorrect, I went ahead and I lined up the M&Ms from start to finish. So let's go ahead and count them together. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Because this is number three, I'm gonna go ahead and write six. Pause this video and tell me what the label would be for this measurement. That's right, our label would be M and M's. Let's try one more together. This measurement would be longer than our previous one like we talked about on Monday. Go ahead and make a prediction. How many M&Ms would it take to measure this popsicle? 
Okay, so let's go ahead and count these M&Ms together. Notice they're all touching and we tried to make them all go in the same direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So on number four, I would record eight. And you guessed it, eight grandmas. Just kidding, not eight grandmas. Again, we're going to write M&Ms because we measured using M&Ms. Today as a mathematician, you're going to be doing what we just tried together. On Seesaw today, you are going to be measuring objects using blocks. Remember that your blocks need to be touching one another, and they also need to all be going in the same direction. If you have any questions, ask one of your teachers, but you are going to rock and roll it. Way to go, first grade friends.